for the serious whitetail hunter, the upcoming season can be full of anticipation, excitement, and a lot of unknowns. Everything's, there's just nothing growing. Nothing. It's so frustrating. Some seasons, after all the hard work, the success almost feels like it comes too easily. I'm in shock. I'm in shock right now. <laughs> Scissors. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> then, there are some seasons, no matter how hard you work, the season just completely humbles you. Tail Edge, perseverance means results. I'm Ben Rising, and welcome to this year's White Tail Edge. White Tail Edge is brought to you by Masio, Black Widow Deer Lures, Prime Archery, G5 Outdoors and Novix tree stains. Hi and welcome to season eight of Whitetail Edge. I'm Ben Rising, your host, and thanks for joining us. Oh, I smoked him, dude! <laughs> He's dead right there. Oh my God. It's hard to believe that it's another new season here that we're bringing out. Um, where is the time gone? It just seems like yesterday that we started our first year of doing Whitetail Edge back in 2015, and here we are already into 2023. So anyways, if you're new to Whitetail Edge, thanks for joining us, and let's jump into these episodes with me on a deer that we call Tall Boy, my first buck of the year. Okay guys, so here's what's up. I just hung a stand in a bedding area here. You can hear my tractor out there in the field running and it's getting ready to storm. You can hear thunder in the background. So I ran over here with the tractor and the brush hog, brush hog around the edge of the field, mowed a clover plot off, and tried to time it to where before it rained, I got this stand hung in here on this point in this bedding area. A lot of big bucks been coming out onto this point. One of them's a buck I call Magnum. He's got two big drops on one side. Um, there's a giant eight point in here. Um, Another nasty looking deer, it's got all kinds of points. Uh, just a lot of good bucks in here. So I'm trying to hang this stand for me or Dan or somebody um, and just see if we can't get on one of them. I just made a scrape right here, Black Widow Mock Scrape. And I got a little rope hanging here. And uh, got the Spartan right there. So what I'm gonna do right now, just take a little Black Widow, young buck. I'm big about the young buck early in the season like this because it's not even hunting season here yet. But I like to use young buck. I don't like to use breeding scents early. I just want to get them knowing this grape is here and starting. You know, that's it. So I just freshen the dirt up, put a little buck pee in there. It doesn't take much either. Just a little, just a little bit. And I'll actually just spray a little bit on this rope right here. I know it doesn't make a lot of sense, but they actually, it just it's curiosity to them. So they'll start messing with that rope eventually. It's just a little piece of rope, just bow rope. But you can see I got the Novix hung right there. Right in a nice V, makes it perfect. Got access coming out of the field into the, 
got to slide through a little bit of weeds and stuff to get in here, but hopefully it'll work out. Every year it's just a grind, you know, and I don't think people really truly understand. A lot of my fans understand because they're real serious deer hunters. Um, but I don't think a lot of the general population that is after mature deer or would like to kill mature deer really truly understand how much work goes into possibly hunting mature deer consistently. Um, you know, and it, it's just, there's no off season basically, you know, from shed hunting after seasons out to, you know, keeping mineral licks going and, you know, trying to keep your deer healthy, um, you know, scouting, you know, after seasons out, looking at those deer trails, going into those areas that you typically wouldn't go in during season just constant information overload, you know, trying to make notes and keep track of things. And so you can kind of know what's going on, you know, running your Spartan cameras um, and matching all that information with what deer you had in certain areas of the farms, you know, so then it comes into the spring, you know, and you're getting ready to start doing clover plots or mowing and spraying plots, you know, then it's, you know, fall plots, um, you know, and this year, we started doing stuff with Casco and we got a new drill and we started doing plots with the drill, you know, the new Holland, we got a boomer 45 working with advantage ag and equipment out of uh, Mount Vernon, Ohio. And along with new Holland, it's been a great partnership, you know, being able to use this little boomer, uh, 45 horsepower tractor. It lifts this eco drill. Just awesome. Uh, I can till with it. I got a bush hog tiller. I can do the no till drill. Um, just about anything you want with the bucket and all that. It's just a perfect size tractor for doing good size stuff. Um, so it's just a constant grind. Not everybody can have all that stuff. I totally understand that. But there's still things you can do on your own properties that, you know, whether it's public land or a small piece of private, you can still scout, still make preparations, uh, mock scrapes, things like that. I mean, there's just always things that can be done. But you have to keep in mind that you don't want to do so much intrusion that you're just running the deer off all the time. So, you know, here we are basically starting out the year, you know, doing these plots, you know, using the deer grow in the plot start, you know, plot boost by deer grow on our plots, getting the ground prepped. Once they grow, you can start using the plot boost, you know, foliar spray. Like again, like I said, the Casco drill using the boomer, prepping the ground, getting ready for the fall. You know, we use illusion systems uh, calls and we use the phase system for our scent control. This is very important because when you're hunting big mature deer, you have to be as scentless as possible. So taking good note of that and making those preparations is key. And, you know, when you're on a big deer, you just have to, you have to cross all your T's and dot your I's. That's just all I can say. Um, and 90% of the big deer I've killed, you know, I'm talking deer over 170 plus, 160 plus, I've killed most of them within the first to third sit. When I look at my wall, almost every one of them has been shot within the first to third sit. There's been a few I've ground longer for, no doubt. Um, but it just seems like you really lessen your chances the more pressure you put on a big deer. So you really have to line things up right. And using that information from your Spartan cameras, you know, we call it most recent information, MRI, you know, using the deer cast to your advantage, looking at those barometers, um, future weather forecasts, wind directions, knowing all that stuff, you know, moon phases, when the moon's going to be setting, uh, when it's going to be rising in the morning, when it's going to be setting in the evening, and I, you've always heard me talk about when you get those moon phases where a moon is falling late in the morning, especially during later season, like, you know, late October going into the rut. When you get a moon that's falling late, later in the day, say like, you know, 9 in the morning, it's still in the sky and starting to fall, or 8.30, 10 o'clock, and it's falling, those deer are just coming back to bed a lot later. They're on their feet in the mornings. Those are good times to be hunting that later season in the morning. Um, early season, like a deer like with tall boy that we're talking about here, when you've got a moon that is rising at like four o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, two hours before dark, 
that is magical. It gets those deer on their feet, especially with a little cool front, and they're coming to those food plots or they're working those mock scrapes or their own scrapes close to bedding, coming to a food source or a staging area. This situation with Tall Boy, I'd made some mock scrapes on the edge of this clover plot earlier in the year, probably around August, I, I open them up. I don't really put much scent in them at that time, but I make the visual effect. And then as September starts coming along, I'll just squirt some, you know, dough urine in there, not in not a heat and an estrus smell or like a young buck smell. Just put some urine in there. Those deer start to take it over. They may not jump on it right away. I'll put a little branch butter even in the branches. But these black widow deer lures are fresh and these deer know they're there. But when their hormones really start going and as you know, season progresses into this mid-October time frame or late September and you get these little cool fronts, these deer want to work those scrapes. It's a, it's a communication thing. Um, so I've had a lot of history with this deer we call Tall Boy. He's a six and a half year old deer now. I've not hunted him before. He's always been a really just big eight point. Um, this year he happened to be a big nine point, but he's super tall off his head, just a a big, big deer, mature deer, and he was the deer I was after, um, or one of the deer that I was going to target, just because of his age, not so much for score, because um, I knew he wasn't going to be a deer that would gross 170. I mean, I knew he was in the 60s, but he was big and mature. I mean, a, a true trophy in all aspects of his age and his body size and just what he's been through in this area and survived. So to kill a deer like him, I would have been happy with. Um, I had some other deer on the list um, that I would shoot that were mature on different farms, but Tall Boy has always been under my craw for some reason, ever since the first velvet picture I got of him this year and really saw what he was going to be like. He just has always stuck with me. Whitetail Edge is powered by DeerCast, Illusion Systems, Deer Grow, Redneck Blinds, Spartan Cameras, analog. Well, it's second day of season here in Ohio. My first time to sit. A little bit windy today. Um, deer cast is showing that uh, deer movement should be okay. Um, but wind is kind of like a, a west southwest wind which is kind of what I need for this stand and I've got two or three different bucks on this farm this year that I would actually probably shoot all of them are very mature good deer uh, one's a big nine point with two two drops on one side I call him magnum um, the other one's a deer I call tall boy he's been here for a couple years big tall giant mainframe eight with just two little g4s but he's a big dominant buck old deer probably six seven years old and then another deer um it's called sneak and just very hardly ever see this deer hardly ever get pictures of him i know he's around but do i feel like i'm on him no do i feel like i'll be in the area if he shows up that he'll be yes so if i'm lucky and he happens to show up i should be in his roundhouse but he's a cool deer um so feels good just gonna have to go in there and see. We're gonna hunt between uh, bedding and a food plot. Uh, that's what we're after. So. There's a doe right over there. Dang it. Figures. I'm gonna get in this no I mean, I am right in their bedroom. There's a doe. There she goes.
I'm in the best tree I feel possible to try to get a good shot before they head out there all the way. Gonna, I got a scrape right here. They hit it quite a bit. So maybe I can get one to come right towards this scrape. And uh, one of these bucks I'm after. But it's really windy, which was kind of nice because it helped hide my, you know, just disguise me a little bit getting in here. I didn't have that far of a walk through the timber, but this time of year they can just bed so close to the food sources. And I did see, I did bump up two does. Hopefully that doesn't, I don't think that'll ruin it. So I'm all strapped in, camera set up, just uh, filming myself here, so I'm going to do the best I can. Welcome to season eight of White Tail Edge. It's one of those evenings where it's overcast, we've had a little bit of rain, it was cool for this time of year in September. Um, not cold, but cool. And it just felt bucky. It felt like one of those nights and the moon was right. I felt like I was going to see some bucks. This camo, I didn't get busted once. Phase, everything worked perfect. Both, all those bigger deer worked downwind of me behind the tree, just like I said. Um, they worked between that ridge, and my wind was just able to get right over top of them. It's a perfect setup. So, really pay attention to that. Um, I'll explain that maybe more later in a video because that's a great tactic. Hi, Ben Rising here with Black Widow Deer Lures. On our show, Whitetail Edge, we're always looking for that one little thing to get the dupe on a big buck. For us, so just become Black Widow Deer Lures. Yes! Yes, baby! Dude! I smoked him, dude! Black Widow Deer Lures, never brown or broken down, and always fresh. So after that hunt on the 25th, which was great, all those buck encounters, I was feeling pretty confident that I was going to be able to get on Tallboy. Dylan was hunting his deer, so I didn't have Dylan in the stand with me, and I'm going again on the 26th. So I'm going to go hunt this clover plot um, back in, tucked in at the back of the farm, close to an acorn ridge. I've got a scrape set up right there, and I feel like I'm going to get Tallboy to come to this scrape. Uh, the wind is good for me. It's blowing out into the plot right over the scrape. So I feel like I'm tight enough to the scrape that it'll blow right over Tallboy's head and I maybe is going to get a shot. It'll give me enough time to get my camera ready and see if I can't get on him. So I slide in there. You know, I'm feeling confident. Some deer starting to move at a distance. Um, I even see Gator again in the standing beans off at about 200 yards away. And he was moving an hour before dark. It's misting a little bit, um, actually started to rain, and then when the rain let up, the sun come back out, and I've got probably 30 minutes before dark, and all of a sudden deer just start moving again. So I'm just sitting there chilling, and I'm kind of trying to keep my eye, and all of a sudden, there's tall boy.
and he comes in so fast. Um, he actually worked a scrape back in the woods sooner than I thought he would. He didn't work the one on the edge. He come right down that edge, and I mean, he was on a mission. I don't know what he was doing, but I could not get on that deer. I was filming him. I got him on film, but I could not get, I couldn't get him to stop, and I didn't even want to booger him, so I just let him be. And he just walked on out of my life that night, and I was like, dang it. But to see him, I felt super confident, and I mean, he was beautiful. So now he was really under my craw because he just looked that much bigger. Uh, for only a nine point deer and I'm like I have got to shoot this deer and so I called Dylan that night and I said look we've got the same wind tomorrow the moon is good the weather's perfect it's cold this deer is going to move again he's going to be there on this plot again tomorrow night or on this scrape and we're going to get him shot like just be at my house let's get this done I just want to make this video while it's fresh and happened this morning. I woke up this morning, checked my Spartan, and had a absolute slob at my grandpa's, which is just overlooking a soybean field. I got two draws to hunt there. Uh, tonight, I'm going to go film Ben as we're going to try to catch up with Tall Boy. We got a pretty good feeling it's going to happen tonight. Got a really massive cold front that just moved in. Um, so, we're feeling pretty confident about tonight. Um, so, if we get it done tonight, tomorrow, I'm going to go out probably midday around noon see if I can find some scrapes or make a mock scrape um, and then I'm gonna do an observatory sit tomorrow evening and uh, just see if I can see where this this, this big deer is coming out of and um, got a pretty good idea where he's coming out of and um, we'll see Yeah. 
destined to kill that deer or something. He's standing straight in front of me on the edge of the deer, right over that branch. White Tail Edge is brought to you by these other fine sponsors. Advantage Ag and Equipment, HHA Sports, Miller's Gun and Supply, Rogue Bow Strings, NFP Insurance, Classic Rack, Cobra Archery, Packer Max, and E-Bikes of Holmes County. Sure enough, deer start moving fairly early that night. Um, we've got little bucks moving around, does moving around, um, and it wasn't too, too awful long. I could see back on the Oak Ridge, I could see deer moving around back there in the staging area before they'd come to this plot. I came to full draw and then tall boy just kind of held up and he just got held up for a second. He was messing around sniffing and so it was a waiting game. See the arrow right there. Dude, he killed me. He killed me, I thought. I saw I was a full draw once, then had to let down. He's a giant. Complete pass through. That's the deer we come in here for, old tall boy blood everywhere already so be careful here put these away I'm gonna track him down should be just right over that bank truthfully look at all this blood these mega meats just destroy them dude that three blade expandable just blew through that deer with this prime inline like it was nothing Look at that. Look at all those bubbles. Dang. Look 
Bigfoot's hat. Yeah, he's right there. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. That's a big boy. I just love it when you make them shots though like that. Yes, he did. He was dead the whole running down that hill. I mean, you can see, just point back up, it only, he only went 100 yards max from the stand. Dude, he's like wedged under there. Oh my gosh, dude. That is a giant buck. I don't care. Look at that. What a, this is the true scene of death right here. Like we're not painting no pictures. Man, I hate taking pictures with all the blood on their antlers like that though. Cause then all the antis are like, oh my gosh, you murdered that deer, so crazy. But when you're shooting mega meats, you can't but help have a horror scene almost every time if you hit them where you're supposed to. Dude, I'm so tickled with this deer. Like literally, that's a pig. One thing that was really cool about this hunt for me is that Dylan and I have never shot a deer together. It's like we have this gorilla on our back, not a monkey, a gorilla. Uh, we've never shot a turkey together. We've never shot a deer together. And we've spent a lot of time in the tree together or hunting turkeys together. And I mean, I, I seriously felt like there was some serious bad mojo. Uh, but being able to have this all come together felt good. We was able to get tall boy. We recovered him down at the bottom of the hill. He didn't go far at all. I mean, he bled like a stuck pig. There was blood instantly. You can see on the video. These mega meats just rip them up. By George, I think he's an 11 pointer. Well, actually, he's 12. <laughs> so here you go. It's another successful hunt. This one was a great hunt. Some of the things that I feel like really made this hunt successful was one, prepping those scrapes early in the year in areas where I knew that this deer liked to hang out, having information on this deer in the years past. Um, using my Spartan cameras, um, having the food source in the right spot as far as tucking this clover back in closer to where he would feel comfortable, moving in daylight. A lot of these mature deer were using this clover plot tucked back in because they felt good there. It was tucked back in, nobody could see them from there. It was closer to their bedding areas, plus they had acorns there. Um, so getting closer to those deer and sometimes I get really close to deer, whether I'm in a bedding area, like the hunt with scissors a few years ago, uh, things like that. Sometimes you gotta get super tight. You just kinda have to know your deer. The most recent information I'd had on tall boy running Spartan cameras, I knew that he was coming to this plot, using this scrape, using this area. He felt comfortable there. So I didn't need to dive deep because I didn't wanna bump him off if I didn't need to. So, and then hunting that cool front with the right moon pattern, definitely was key for me using deer cast to my advantage um, you know checking that barometer checking those moon phases it's all in one app it kind of gives you the peak times of movement if you don't have deer cast check it out because they have the new deer cast maps feature you can drop icons measure your plots mark everything out landowner information it's really a great tool it's key so it's just a lot of these amazing factors or a lot of these factors make up for amazing tools that we're able to use these days. Um, so check it out. All our sponsors are listed on our webpage and I encourage you to just check it out because every one of them we believe in and I think all of them can help you become a better hunter. This is something that we are going to be dealing with probably off and on. All the, we actually have. We just haven't had it in this area for a while. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've never really happy. dealt with it. Okay, it's been happening somewhere in the state in the last five, six, seven years. We've got counties that are testing positive for it anyway. So when you kill early, it's a little bit bittersweet, you know, and I'm not complaining, but I already start looking forward to Ohio the next year of what deer that I'll be chasing because I had three deer, probably some of the most 
some of the best prospects I've had in a long time in Ohio that would be coming into 23. Um, little did I know what was about to happen, though, and it's something that I've never experienced myself, and we got hit with EHD. I've heard of it. You know, I've seen people in the Midwest dealing with it, the juries, people that I know, other people in Ohio have dealt with it, but I've never personally dealt with it on anything that I've leased, owned, or had permission to hunt. I've never found what I considered an EHD deer. And I noticed that this buck I called Magnum, double drop tine buck, all of a sudden just fell off the map. And I mean, I had this deer all the time, pegged. And all of a sudden, he just was gone. And I'm like, somebody must have got him first weekend of season. Um, and then I get this phone call from the farmer that was getting ready to pick beans. And he said, there is a deer, a really nice buck, laying in the bean field over there on your lease. And so I go over there, and sure enough, it's Magnum. Perfect hole in the bottom, but we think that's from just, I mean, it's underneath completely on the bottom. There's no way a deer... Or a hunter did that. And he's been missing off camera since opening week, so we really do believe it's EHD. That last picture we got of him, this is probably where he was headed, because the last picture of him was right over here. I had noticed some buzzards earlier in the week on a different spot of the farm, so then I got putting things together, and I instantly went there, found another deer, found another deer, then closer to my house, I found two, three more deer. Um, it just all of a sudden just started hitting, and it was sad. I've never dealt with it before, so, you know, instantly I'm freaking out because it's already killed two of the deer that I was looking forward to for next year. Um, and so it was sad. It's just something that Mother Nature deals you, and so you got to deal with it. But there is some things that I've found out since that we can somewhat do to kind of help prevent that. And it's not foolproof, but it can definitely help build your deer's immunity system, and that is Analogics. Um, they've come out with a product, it's called uh, TX4 Anashield, and you, it can be in the mineral or it can be in their Analogics Gold Feed or um, their supplements that you add to your feed. So it's something I would definitely encourage you to look at because I talked to Mark Dury at length about it, and he is a big, big believer. He has definitely seen a huge change in his Iowa deer since he started using this stuff to help his deer because it just boosts their immunity. Analogics was one of the first to ever come out with an actual vaccination for pen-raised deer. Now, we're not hunting pen-raised deer, and neither are you most likely, um, but for deer farmers and whatnot they would deal with ehd too so analogics actually came out with a vaccine that they could give deer and it really helped save the herd so then they started putting these things together and they started coming up with basically a power pack that would go inside with essential oils and vitamins and minerals and they worked on this for a while and now they've put it into their minerals and their feeds and it's something that we're going to start using heavily this year to just kind of build those immunities up to help deer be able to fight something like this when they get EHD. And EHD, if you don't understand or know much about it, I encourage you to look it up. It's a, it's a disease that they get by basically a gnat or a midge that bites their tongue. Uh, it's eparat, episodic hemorrhagic disease. Um, you know, it's pretty pretty neat to read about to see what causes it. Some people think it's blue tongue. It's kind of a form of that, but it's not exactly the same thing. Um, but basically, if it doesn't kill your deer, it messes them up for a long time. But most of the deer that get it, they die within 24 to 48 hours. Uh, it's fast moving, and it just waylays them. Um, most of the time, they die in water or very close to it. Um, and they get it from a lot of stagnant water where the midges lay eggs, um, you know, in these stagnant water ponds. And then they hatch and those little gnats and midges bite, you know, the tongues of the deer. Or I've heard some even bite through the velvet of their antlers. Um, but typically, it's they bite their tongue when they take a drink of the water and then it infects them. 
So I definitely something I'd never dealt with. It was a new experience for me. Uh, and it little did I know it was just the start of the struggle for uh, the 22 season for me. Even though I had already killed a deer, thought I was off to a great start, my, my trials were just about to begin. Hey, thanks for watching episode one of season eight of Whitetail Edge. I hope you enjoyed this hunt and maybe learned a little something from it too. If you don't subscribe to our YouTube channel, please do so. You can watch us on YouTube, Mossy Oak Go, um, Rumble, different places, our socials on Facebook and Instagram, Carbon TV. You can find us about anywhere anymore. Please follow us and subscribe because it helps us out a lot. Now, for the next episode, we're going to be following Dylan Gandy in Ohio as he chases a big deer that he's been on for a few weeks.